What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Tuesday, September 20th, 2022 date. It is about 11.47 a.m. California time. Latest quake uh, shows some activity ramping up there in Southern California. Also, we got a 5.9 uh, and now upgraded by the USGS to a 6.0 in the area of the Kuril Kamachaka Trench and the Aleutian Trench right here in our little watch area that we've been watching for a little while um not a big earthquake but uh a little bit of uptick here kicking off this morning also in southern california right smack dab on the southern portion of the san andreas fault that's kind of a big deal right let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the usgs map shown last 24 hours of earthquake activity there is the 6.0 upgraded from a 5.9 by the usgs Kicking up right here on this bend along the Aleutian Trench and the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Pretty important area. Uh, almost immediately following that 6.0, we're getting some activity right here ramping up. You guys, look at this. Look at this. Right smack dab just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Let's pull up the all magnitudes here and see if we got any swarming kicking up. I know we had a little bit of earthquake activity over the last week or so. Uh, down here on the Brawley Seismic Zone and a swarm itself over here along the North American side of the plate boundary. Let me show you that real quick, uh, what I was talking about. Okay, it was up a little bit further, but still just shy of the southern section of the San Andreas Fault. This little swarming right here was a pretty good cluster of quakes. But today and right now, uh, I don't believe these are phantom earthquakes because I've seen it showing up there on the Barrett Station uh, immediately following that 6.0. A 3.5 and a 2.6 again just off the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault now this section right here hasn't seen a major earthquake uh, in over 300 years this little branch right here folks that's where the big one is expected to occur uh, and produce an 8.1 magnitude earthquake there for the Southern California area uh, is it gonna happen today tomorrow who knows all I know is when we see activity really really close here i'm talking within um what do we got here maybe according to the scale here 10 miles we got maybe a mile so this activity plus the movement that we've seen here in that swarming area by the way it looks like there is some a little bit more swarming up there as well today let me bring up the all magnitudes map again actually that's a separate swarming uh, so this is the one here from over the weekend is when this kind of kicked up, this little swarming area. There was a pretty good cluster of quakes here. Let's get a tally. About 77 earthquakes. Even had a couple threes in there as well. Uh, so now we got a, a little separate swarm closer, but a little bit further south as well in the one range. And now we got activity on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. These two swarms here on the North American side of the San Andreas Fault, this one right here, this recent activity on the Pacific side. So something brewing out there, folks, in Southern California. I'm going to put the earthquake watch back up for Southern Cal, considering all this activity that's taking place today as well. Um, movement in Arizona yesterday. They had a 4.4. I don't recall the last time Arizona seen an earthquake of a 4.4 magnitude earth of, of, uh, of that level. Let's double check the historical data here real quick for this region. Um, zoom in here. Of course, Las, uh, north of Las Vegas and Nevada, they get riddled with uh, a lot of earthquakes. But according to the key here, since about 1900, uh, looks like maybe there was a 4.0 up in St. George, Utah a while back. But specifically for this area here, not nothing in historical data. So it's a little crazy, a little odd here uh, with some unusual movement taking place. And now we get activity today immediately following the 6.0. Just goes to show you how one section of the plate can uh, definitely adver affect the other side uh, in a negative or in a good way. In this case, I think it's a negative way because we're getting some activity here around the... Uh, this little branch here so we'll keep an eye on that i am going to issue an earthquake watch for this activity kicking up today and over the last week uh, sometimes it uh, 
sometimes it pops up. We'll have to keep that, uh, keep a close eye on that. Down here in Mexico, of course, we had that uh, 7.6 coming in yesterday. That was the uh, tide for the biggest earthquake of the year so far. So far, we've seen uh, some fours and fives, and according to the uh, the Mexico Meteorological Society, seismic activity continues here in the two and three range at a pretty good cluster, but USGS only shows 4.0 and above. That's why we're not seeing a huge amount of earthquake activity aftershock movement following yesterday's 7.6, but it's there, definitely, definitely there. All right, so we'll watch that. Um, let's check out real quick. We're just going to be dancing across the map here a little bit. I want to check out the 6.0. Um, very shallow earthquake. It is in a zone that does see quite a bit of earthquake activity. Um, and some large quakes as well, up in the 6 to 7 magnitude range, like we've seen today. Uh, this whole area, the subduction zones, any subduction zones up here that have a super high accumulated slip rate, stress rate, uh, is capable of producing uh, it, it definitely earthquakes above 7.0. Uh, I believe this area, um, the Kurokam Chaka Trench, and potentially this area of the Aleutian Trench is primed uh, for a large earthquake above the 6.0 threshold. We'll see what happens throughout the day today. But uh, this just kind of came out of the blue and then stirred up uh, Southern California too. The Aleutian Trench further east Got a little activity up through the Cook Inlet area and also back building here along the Pacific Plate off the coast, well off the coast of King Cove, Alaska. 4.1 at 10 kilometers deep. That's right here at the surface level pretty much. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom back into the west coast here. Nothing showing up really up in the Pacific Northwest for some reason. Not for sure what's going on. Uh, we are seeing some more activity up here along the southern end of the Cascadia. A 2.3 coming in. Uh, earlier this morning, late last night time frame actually, uh, at 29 kilometers deep into the Cascadia. Now that's a subduction zone of Northern California and it extends well up um, offshore of the Vancouver Island ranges. Got to get a drink of milk. Haven't been drinking enough milk recently. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, we did have some activity as well along the coastal range here inland along the Bartlett Springs Fault System. Uh, I believe that was a 4.0. Let me see here. Yes, 4.0 in that mix uh, near Covalo, up there in the mountains. And um, that's about nine kilometers deep, not a big one. Uh, but we are seeing some aftershock activity, or not a deep one, I should say, but uh, we are seeing some aftershock activity sequence there in the two range quite a bit a little separate swarming kicking up there outside of Covalo. Uh movement down south here along the clear lake volcanic field that's very typical of the uh <clears throat> operations that's per being performed down there uh rest of central california some activity here along the hayward fault uh and the calaveras fault system extending into the uh, san andreas fault just some microquakes there today uh, and in fact, looking at the 2.5 map and above, uh, the only noticeable activity is this down here south on the San Andreas and also up north into the Covalo area. So most of the movement we see here uh, is all microquake, but uh, gotta watch this here. This is lighting up. It is lighting up, folks. We'll keep an eye on that pretty close. I know, um, you know, we see swarms down here on occasion on the Brawley Seismic Zone and <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Lucy Jones says that's too far away from the uh, segment of the San Andreas Fault to really trigger anything. I, I kind of disagree. I think any type of swarming around a major fault system here that's been stressed and built up for 300 years, wound as tight as can be, uh, is uh, something to watch. And I believe that could trigger a big one on this plate boundary. Uh, but we've seen these swarms in the past kind of stretch up right here. But this is a little bit closer than those past swarms that we've seen. Uh, so we'll watch that. Definitely watch that. I keep bringing back to that because it's just kind of uh, uh, it's drawing me in there. Yellowstone National Park is swarming like crazy again. It's been ongoing here for a little while. A little bit of migration of the swarm itself uh, going down into the southern end of the caldera. Right now they're showing 36 earthquakes on the map. Let's go ahead and check out the latest Yellowstone overview here. 
Stand by for a second. There we go. Of the seismographs across the portion of Yellowstone, this here black line, uh, kind of like in an oval type shape. Well, maybe not oval, but yeah, you get it. That's the uh, Yellowstone caldera, and that swarm that we've been watching has been ongoing just to the northwest of this caldera, right around. And it kind of looks like it's right around Holmes Hill, the area of the most seismic activity. It looks like. And uh, overnight, definitely kicking up quite a bit as well. It looks like there may be some twos in the mix. And over the last couple hours here, the swarm has continued. So there's quite a bit of activity here, folks, just today. Um, you know, USGS only showing, uh, what are they showing up here on the map? 36 earthquakes. Uh, and that's only in the last 24 hours. Looking at the map, 36. Hey, they're getting a little bit more accurate. They're starting to count some of these smaller ones. It looks like there may be, uh, I don't, I'm not going to count them all, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe another 10 or 20 more that need to be added onto that count. And uh, their, their magnitudes here, excuse me. Let's go check this out. Yeah, there's a couple. I've seen a couple twos in there. You can kind of define those from the smaller microquakes. The largest one so far looks to be a 2.9 at 0.642 uh, UTC time. 0.642 is going to be this one right here. That's the larger one, and it's more prominent far as the thickness of the earthquake signature goes. Now, you kind of have to look around the Yellowstone map here to kind of make sure that that earthquake struck within this area. That's how they pinpoint the exact location. Um, that signature is going to show up less uh, as these stations get distant from the epicenter. Or say if that 2.9 kicked up over here somewhere, it'd be stronger here and less prominent uh, on this side of the uh, map but uh, either way, pretty good swarm kicking off here. I want to see if they've included anything over the past week. Um, let's see what we got. So Yellowstone National Park, 173 earthquakes here over the last week. Uh, the 3.9 was the largest. I remember that coming in uh, yesterday or the day before. So they're filling it in quite nicely, uh, but it's taken them a day or two. They don't get really active on the weekends as far as reporting these microquakes, but... Uh, they're, they're kicking up there. Uh, 173 earthquakes. Not a... Um, nothing big yet, right? The largest so far are 3.9. And I have to say this is ongoing more than just the last week. So I want to see what we got here for the last 30 days. It's been ongoing for... Uh, and that includes this little separate swarm down here. Uh, and if you want to include the uh, Hebgen Lake area. Good look at uh, some separate swarming all over Yellowstone National Park over the last 30 days. Uh, almost 500 earthquakes at Yellowstone over the last 30 days. And again, the 3.9, the largest. It looks like we had a couple threes in there as well. Lots of twos, lots and lots of twos, lots and lots of ones, and many smaller quakes. And those smaller quakes are going to look like this here. Very thin, very, um, but well-defined. And that's a localized earthquake to this station here. Uh, which is situated around the Holmes Hill area. But uh, that's, that's a lot of earthquake activity, I'd say. And it's still continuing right now. All right, let's back out of here and head to the One Day All Magnitudes map. Let's see what we got going on throughout the center portion of the country. Not a whole lot. Quarry blasts out there in Oklahoma. One earthquake up against the Appalachian Mountains here in Tennessee. It looks like a 1.5. But aside from that, things very quiet out here along the eastern coast. Um, not a whole lot going on through Puerto Rico. Look at that. That's very wimpy in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, only four earthquakes. This is the all magnitudes map as well. Normally we see a good 10 to 15 or more in this little swarming area. And uh, not a whole lot going on there right now in that region. Cluster quakes down in the South America area. Uh, a little bit happening overnight and this morning it looks like I'm surprised the USGS is reporting a 3.8 wow into the uh, uh, Argentina area but deep deep down into the Peru Chile trench 210 kilometers there <clears throat> a lot of a lot of stuff going on there in the uh, in the subduction zone there what do we got further west noticing a little spreading out of activity here today and uh, overnight along the Kermadec Trench and the Tonga Trench all shown some deeper activity. Uh, deepest one so far looks to be a 4.3 coming in overnight. 
uh, early this morning time frame at 464 kilometers for a 4.3. Uh, some further activity around Vanuatu. And uh, it's spreading out a little bit. You guys notice that? Getting a little bit more wider earthquake activity. Things starting to maybe settle back um, out of that little pattern. For the longest time, we're looking at just major activity within this within this arrow-shaped zone. We have seen some further movement westward uh, around the Middle East and the north of the Himalaya Mountains area. Looks like a couple fours kicking off out in Afghanistan and some earthquake activity in India. 4.3 coming in last night. Latest one in China to 4.3. 4.3 seems to be the magic number out there. Big Island of Hawaii, can't uh, forget those folks out there. Uh, getting some movement, stretching off the Pahala area out towards Lohi Seamount. See a uh, typical deep movement around 33 kilometers, even one at 33.3. Oh yeah, some magic numbers right there. Little activity up around the Mauna Loa area as well. Some very shallow movement taking place on the negative depths there. But we're also getting some deeper movement there just off the uh, eastern edge, eastern side I should say. No major changes though to note there at the volcanoes on Hawaii. Uh, I think I definitely got to watch a couple areas today folks. When you got Southern California lighting up, let's see if we got any more earthquake activity out here uh, in that little swarm. Right now it looks like just a 3.5 and a 2.6. You know, five minutes from now this thing could trigger an 8.1 and, and uh, who knows? Uh, and then it could not happen. It could be uh, a couple more years. Who knows, right? All I know is swarming around an area of a major built-up zone, right? Something to watch. The best thing you guys can do is be on guard if you live out there in Southern California. For sure. Always got to be prepared. Let's check out the EMSC model real quick here and see what we got for uh, movement. See if there's anything not being reported out here from the USGS. There's the 6.0 up into the Kuril Kamchaka and the Aleutian Trench up there. Uh, there's some of the activity, a little bit more aftershock activity, which, by the way, they did have a 5.9. Let's see if I can zoom in here to this area. Uh, the Off the coast of Mexico did see a 5.9 aftershock. Stand by for a second. Let me see if these guys are uh, reporting it. They reported it as a 5.8. EMSC still reporting it as a 5.9. See if I can zoom in here a little bit closer. Get rid of some of these uh, other quakes there on the map. There's there's a cluster right there. Here's more of the earthquake activity. See all the threes and the fours? Uh, the EMSC model is picking up the activity from the uh, the Mexico source, which is the Servicio. Uh, okay, I'm not going to read that, but <laughs> the, Seismog, the Seismic National. Okay, there we go. Anyway, in Mexico City, they are the ones that are monitoring the activity uh, and the source parameters. I guess we can click on them and see what's going on. Um, okay. I mean, I can speak a little bit of Spanish, but I can't really read it all that great. So, catalog seismograms. Let's see what we got up here. There's somewhere. I'm not for sure where this is at, though. I have to look into this. Oh, there we go. Translate, right? Let's translate into English. Broadband seismograms. Currently, only the following seismograms are available for consultation via the web. Ooh, okay. Well, there's definitely some earthquake activity. But either way, folks, you guys get it. There's definitely more than the uh, USGS is showing. I really wish that the USGS would incorporate the uh, certain different agencies into their map. Or at least make it an option. I don't think there is an option. But, uh, man, it would be awesome if they did implement into that somehow, you know, in, underneath the setting. But uh, they, they just don't have it. At least I can't find it anywhere. If there is, let me know, folks, if you see an option out there. But I, I don't think there is. All right, uh, we checked out Yellowstone. We checked out the activity along the west coast there and the 6.0. Let's go ahead and check out uh, space weather and then we'll wrap it up real quick. And you notice, folks, you know, there's been a lot of uh, earthquake activity here over the last couple days. Some large activity, the largest one of the year, the 7.6 yesterday, with only very minimal solar weather activity over the last 
four or five days or more. So we really haven't seen a uptick in space weather, but we have seen an uptick in earthquake activity. So there, there again, the uh, relation or, or the lack of relation between the two. Take your pick. I'm just kind of counting these down and, and tallying them up a little bit. Right now, more earthquake activity when the solar weather is uh, minimal. We do have a coronal hole facing us that will amplify um, the geomagnetic unrest in the coming days. This is now just kind of a, uh, gonna be hitting us here. I'm not, I'm not for sure when this is gonna arrive. Let's go ahead and check. Just a small coronal hole, but it is facing us on both sides of the equator there. Looks like September 22nd time frame could have a chance of a 50% uh, at the higher latitudes for, for uh, some geomagnetic unrest, which includes the auroras, obviously, uh, but doesn't look all that big. Not a whole lot as far as the forecast goes. So we'll keep an eye on that for uh, any changes. Solar flare activity, there's not a whole lot either. Uh, these guys showing 99% chance for a C flare, 30% for M flare, 5% for X flare. Not for sure where, the, where that's coming from. The flare activity right now uh, only popping up here into the C category. Looks like we may have had one up into the uh, low M, very low uh, overnight, but uh, that's a very small one. The sunspots, 3102, which is our former 3088 bad boy sunspot. Down here on the bottom, uh, 3105. Let's see what we got for 3105. That one's growing a little bit, uh, getting some complex fields there. Not for sure where this uh, sunspot activity is occurring from, at least these seas right now. Uh, these guys are reporting no major events. Let's see, 3106 is our new one, right? 3105 is our new one. Where are they getting 3106 at? Huh. That's on the southeastern limb. That's 3106. But uh, up here on the map, they have it set 3105. So I'm not for sure what's going on. Southeastern limb. A little odd. All right. Well, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Either way, I don't think there's any major threats uh, brewing from the uh, current Earthside sunspot. So we'll keep an eye on it for sure, though. Latest update. That's from a couple days ago. All right, folks. Uh, be on guard out there. I am going to key up the uh, Southern California earthquake watch right now. Just, just because, folks of this movement we've seen over the last week uh, with swarms up here just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault now migrating over it. Uh, you can kind of see that little migration there so that can't be a good sign but either way we'll keep you guys updated and uh, if you do live down there in SoCal just be prepared make sure you have an earthquake plan it's always good to uh, double check stuff you know make sure you got some canned foods and whatnot maybe in a tote um, cash on hand that's always a good idea a lot of people don't like to uh, carry cash around it's all about credit cards and, and bank cards but it's always good to keep cash on hand you never know when you might need it all right folks stay safe out there and we will chat you guys a little bit later on tonight what do we got there 5.1 kicking up on the uh, earthquake 3d globe it looks like down in whoa way south here that's uh right on the plate boundary it looks like south sandwich area no yes let's double check that real quick see where we're at exactly kind of curious about that earthquake down there let's see yeah uh, these guys aren't showing it yet oh yeah they are 5.1 south sandwich islands looks like it is into the trench a little bit uh, 43 kilometers deep on the northern end. Alrighty, folks. Either way, be prepared. Stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys a little bit later on tonight with a uh, complete update. Unless something major changes out there. Peace out, folks.